Hello, 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 and welcome to another thrilling episode of Prog Review, in which I review the new Steve Hackett album. The Cir Circus and the Night Nightfish? Night Night Whale. Night Whale. And I can I can quite happily say that this new Steve Hackett album is a load of old shit. What can I say? I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so I don't I don't even know. I don't know what to say. Yeah, that, that's probably what you was expecting me to say. But let let's let, let's start this again. Should we start this again? I'm going to start it again. Just bear with me. I'm just going to going to start again. All right. Hello, 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 and welcome to another thrilling episode of Prog Review. And today we are reviewing The Circus and the Night Whale by Steve Hackett. Yeah. <laughs> what can I, I can only apologize for the, the, the earlier outburst. I can only apologize. Um, I think they call that subverting your expectations. My expectations were certainly subverted. This is the 111th Steve Hackett album. I, I don't know. I don't know how, many count, how many albums has it been? I got so so busy in trying to think of, of a funny skit to do without actually, you know, putting any effort into it. I should have found out what this was in the chronology of Mr. Hackett. He's had a few, hasn't he? He's had a few, so... Uh, what was the last one? Uh, 28th. It's the 28th studio album, I believe. That's called Wikipedia, so... Hey, hey, it's not my fault if I get it wrong. So, yeah, this is um, the new album by Steve Hackett. Um, 13 tracks... I'm not sure how many minutes it is. How many minutes is it? It certainly skips by. Bear with me. I'm just going to double check how long, it, how long is it. 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's good. I like that. That's why I like it. It's 45 minutes long. Um, it's his whatever album I just said it was. Um, a follow on from the last one. Again. <laughs> Just such a totally unprepared for this. What was the last album called? It was called something. Uh, it was called Surrender of Silence. God, was that three years ago? Because Under a Mediterranean Sky was out that year as well. God, it they all bunch up together. Um, so we've had three years. We've had three years to wait between those records. Um, wasn't too, you know, wasn't too bothered by this after the last one and the one before that you know the last few the last few of his records his solo records it's been a good a good few years since I've enjoyed a Steve Hackett album so I wasn't I wasn't expecting much from this I wasn't expecting much from this when they said oh it's a it's a concept album I thought oh, oh, oh blimey I thought blimey um, I thought that that's not going to be good but here we are. I listened to it. I've listened to it three times. Bloody hell! I've listened to it on the streams, and also listened to the surround sound mix. So somebody who wins, who wins the, one of these CDs, is going to have a Blu-ray that's been fingered by yours truly. Don't worry. I wash me my hands before and afterwards, because I'm a gentleman. Um. So yeah, it's. A concept album, and it's um autobiographical. autobiographical. Yeah. And it's about a circus and a night whale. I thank you. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what it's. It's about something. It's about some things that have happened. Um, you know, and that, that's it. That's it. But did I? Did I enjoy it? The thing about Hackett, right? 
as and again I'm going to say I, I love him dearly I love him dearly as a player you know and again a very big inspiration to me the first those first few solo albums he did were a very important you know acolyte through defector very important to me and again even these later ones yeah that I'm a fan a connoisseur even I won't use the fan fan I never use the F word there never use the F word always use connoisseur and um, so yeah this was I was pleasantly surprised by this the thing about Hackett is it, some of his stuff is always a bit cheesy it's a bit hokey right and once I turn my brain off and I got over that the opening track people of the smoke I think is you know I think it's the probably the the worst track on the record you know and because it's just it just feels a bit it just it's this cheesy hack it <laughs> people are just they're, they're grimacing and they're grinding their teeth as I say this but you know what I mean if you listen to some of his stuff um he does veer off into that you know some of his you know so songs are a bit, you know, a bit cheesy. But I still love him. I still love him for it. Um, and the people that smoke it, it describes London in the, you know, the 50s and whatnot. And like I say, and Taking You Down, I think is about... I'm trying to remember his biography. I think he had a friend who was a bit of a, a ne'er-do-well. And I think that's about him, you know? So yeah, People of the Smoke I think is probably the weakest track on the other album. And then These Passing Clowns is an instrumental piece. Uh, Taking You Down is a, is, a, is a right old rocker. And then Sylvain sings on it. Now normally, when I hear him singing, I vomit into my own ears. It, it, yeah, I do. It's like an involuntary reflex. It's, a, yeah, it's the same effect on me as Stephen Wilson. But because he's not pretending to be in Genesis and he's actually singing at his own range... He's quite a good rock singer, and he should sing in his own range. That's why I don't like it when he covers Genesis because he's, you know, it's, it's mimicry. But here he's singing in his own voice, and it passes okay. But they've also put on the old tremolo effect on the whole thing, and it's I quite like that. It was an interesting um, production choice. Uh, yeah, some of the again. Should I talk about production? No, I'll leave that till the end. So I quite like that one, um, and it goes on from there really. And it, it 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 goes from rollicking rock and roll where you get to hear you know Hackett doing his thing and he doesn't he doesn't do that awful cod heavy metal nonsense that he became obsessed with you know you, you've got him going back to his more melodic playing so and that's what I want to hear I want to hear melodic Hackett and you get that here in fucking spades it's a return to form so that's really good. Um, and yeah, you, you the great thing about the record is you do feel like you're going on a journey. It is a journey from 50s London to the various travels he's having with his new missus. You know, so I think it. I think that's the the, the 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 that's why it works for me. Is you do feel like there is an unfolding story. Um, I'm not sure what it all means because I haven't read the lyrics. But I know that there's a night whale involved and a circus. There's lots of circus imagery. There's lots of merry-go-rounds and fairground imagery in the lyrics. Again, he's done that before on the likes of Please Don't Touch. You know, this is familiar. Again, there is a familiarity about it. Not that he's necessarily repeating himself, but he is refer. you get the feeling he's referring back. You know, there's some, uh, was it? exophoric references to his own own material he's referring to himself i believe i might be wrong um you know to he's to his own to his own catalog i believe when he's when he's playing this so you do get the feeling that he is you know almost it's almost like a almost like a greatest hits but it's not you know what i mean it's the greatest hits stylistic hits as it were you get some great um, acoustic guitar uh, john hackett turns up he plays flute and he goes full Jethro Tull on it. Yeah, he, he does Ian Anderson. And I, I thought that was really cool. It's a more kind of rock and roll flute than you get. You know, what was missing, I'm going to be a bit of a, this is my bitchy bit, is some of that more pastoral romanticism is missing. Um, you know, where it's Hackett and his brother, you know, doing the flute and acoustic guitar thing. I think that would, just a little bit of that would have been nice. 
just a little bit but this is a nitpick i am nitpicking um yeah it gets a bit soppy with with um wherever you are which reminded me of um oh god oh the guy from oh, i've forgotten the name of the band wait a minute razor light who did the he did the music of from the snow dog and the snowman and it reminded me of that and i really like that because i'm a soppy git so um it reminded me of that yeah um and yeah i enjoyed it and it ends with a track called white dove which i think is just really it's this this is what i want this is what i want from a hackett album it's a, an acoustic number instrumental number and it's like yeah that's what i want i want him to do all of it all at the same time and here we go and yeah if you can turn your brain off you know and ignore some of the cheesy rhymes and some of the uh some of the soppy lyrics you know because it's more for girlfriend if you know what i mean it's it's not a bad album i think it's probably the best album since to watch the storms right it's complete it feels you know objectively oh it, you know as it it's a story album and i think it does take you on a journey there is a journey involved so it, it you know it you can tick that box um it takes you back to those old days of of progressive music when you know bands used to do these kind of records so it's a bit you know it's a bit old-fashioned in that respect but again you have a 21st century uh production style and sensibility um i think the only thing is a lack of a lack of keyboards you know yeah i think we needed a I think we needed a a a Tony Banks style keyboard solo on it. Just saying, just saying, because you are, I guess you are referencing Genesis in here. There is some, there is some moments where it does sound vaguely Genesis. -y. Um, I think that would have been a, a a good nod to the past, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's a journey. It's a journey, you know, from that original kind of crackly needle on the record start which we've heard before but we'll, we'll, we'll let it pass and the almost sepia be, you know sepia tone beginning to the 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 blue skies you know sunlight on your face sandy beach ending with white dove mind you, you could almost be on the uh, got it you're on the raft aren't you after the whale has spat you out you're on the you're on the the the, the crude raft that you've made you know sitting there in your shredded clothes with the sun looking at the white dove that's the last track got it figured it out there you go um i i, I really enjoyed it and i feel kind of weird for, for enjoying it you know because you know i feel a bit dirty i feel a bit troubled by it all but yeah i wasn't expecting much i listened to it and i enjoyed it and then I, like i said I listened to it the stream when in the stream dropped to midnight this morning on this day 16th of february then i listened to it again after you know in the morning and then i listened to it this afternoon when the blu-ray arrived and i popped that in and listened to the surround sound mix surround sound mix is functional they only do a little bit of round and round when they say sing round and round and round the fairground bit they do it do, do they do the circular thing with the voices it's a fairly balanced um, surround sound mix. Um, Steve, love you, man. You didn't fuck around with that Dolby Atmos. You went for 5.1. I could kiss you on the bottom for that. Thank you. Most appreciated. He's not watching. It doesn't matter. They don't watch me because, you know, far too controversial. For I am, I am the uh, Howard Stern of prog. Remember that. Whatever that means. Uh, so, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And... He set out to create a, a, an old-fashioned concept album that told a story, and it works. It works, and it's forty-five minutes as well. There's also a sense of 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 this space. There's this time for you know. There are bits where it's got the undulating feel. You know, it just it just holds together really. It's like it's the most complete album he's done in a long time. You know, it uh, it, it goes back to Acolyte. You know. You know, our acolyte is a is a journey, you know, and goes 
It's like that. I'm not saying it's exactly the same. It does. There are bits in it where it does reference. There are some bits in it, you know. Oh, I thought it sounded a bit like a this tower struck down. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I'm, I've waxed lyrical enough. Um, yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. I approve. I approve. Um, that's that. Go and buy it or whatever. Or I'm going to say this and then next Tuesday when the raffle is drawn, it's going to be redundant. But I do have two copies. I do have co two copies of this for raffle. Uh, 50 p ticket. Um, I thought more people would want to go in for it, uh, but we've only got a, literally a handful of... of of entrance so you know i'm not saying that to shift tickets i'm just saying that i was disappointed because i thought everyone would be excited for this album and um the thing is and this is where i do moan he's he's gonna do you know uh foxtrot at 50 and hack it highlights when really he should be playing the whole album he should be playing all of this all the way through and leaving that genesis stuff behind put it back on the burner that's that's how I'd go and see you play live. If you played the whole album in its entirety, I'd say, yeah, I'm going to go and watch that because that's the spectacle, you know. But hey, Genesis puts bums on seats, and I get it. Divorces are expensive. I get it. Um, and it's a shame that this is where we're at. But other than that, Whinge, recommended. It's recommended. Though, was it Prog Magazine did say that this is his best solo so album ever it ain't there's still there's still those early ones that that early run you know but it's not bad it's not bad it's almost getting back to being on form and again the production the production does sound a bit in the box but you know that's just me production ears you know and that's the way things are now that's the own my only criticism of it um but yeah, if you can unhook your brain and get over some of the cheesy rhymes and some of the uh, the soppy bits, it ain't bad, all right? It ain't bad. Ain't bad at all and a pleasant surprise. I like to be shocked. It's, it's another one that's done it. Or maybe, maybe I've got a brain tumour and, and I've, I'm, I haven't got long left. Maybe that's it. Maybe I've got this some pressure pushing on the old grey matter and I'm going soft in my old age. Thank you for watching. My name's been Darren Lock. I've been talking about it. Steve Ackett's The Circus and the Nightwell. You don't have to buy it. You can probably stream it. It's good fun. And I like it. It is fun. It is fun. It is fun. It's, it's, it's an enjoyable romp. And doesn't take itself too seriously. And what else is there? And you do get to hear the full gamut of the Steve Hackett guitar experience. Which is nice which is nice, though it does lack some of that pastoral romanticism that we're used to get. But there is a hint of some of the uh, the more weird esoteric stuff that he used to do. It's just a mere whiff of it, you know. Could have done with a bit more of that. A bit more of the comedy, if you know what I mean. Because I liked it when he used to do his funny songs as well, but we don't tend to do those anymore. Thank you for watching. That's it. I'm going on too long. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, prog on. Go and get, go and listen to it. Buy it. Enter the raffle. Whatever. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. That you're watching. But yeah, good one. Good one. And look, look at that. It does that for me. Isn't that clever? Isn't that clever? Prog on. <laughs>